Begin this morning with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting together in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference, and we do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. So by your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace upon grace, and our sins are forgiven. So let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love is poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Loving God, you direct our lives by your grace. And your words of justice and mercy 
reshape the world. We ask that you would mold us into a people who welcome your word and who serve one another. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. There is a business that has its sign out along the road that I pass often. This sign always gets my attention. It draws me to it. I guess in that regard, it's quite a sign. The only problem is, is that it gets my attention for all the wrong reasons. The sign is wooden. Eh, that in and of itself isn't that spectacular, but it's dark, it's, it's painted uh, black. It's a wooden sign painted black, and it has affixed to it wooden letters that are painted white. Well, maybe that isn't that uh, amazing either, but this always gets my attention. Every single one of those letters is crooked. None of them is lined up on the other, and they're all uh, on there sort of haphazard. Some of them are crooked. Uh, the whole thing is off-center, and this sign gets my attention every time that I drive past it. The name of the business is The Modern Image, and it's a beauty salon, and it blows me away. If this is their sign, if this is what they think is trim and proper, if this is what they think is the modern image, I don't think I would want anything to do with that place. This might be the worst name, the worst sign, the biggest discrepancy among the two things, and it gets my attention every time, and honestly, it makes me laugh a little bit. The whole thing is trouble. The whole thing is a public relations nightmare. It really is. And the dilemma is, the thing that I get thinking about is, uh, if this is a beauty salon and this is the kind of sign that they put out, what kind of sign am I putting out when I'm angry or when I'm inappropriate or when I say things out of a place that is frustrated or whatever to other people, when I uh, put my head down and walk away instead of saying hello to people, what kind of sign do I put out and does it line up with who people expect me to be? Are our words and our actions a sign that lines up with who we are supposed to be? Around the same time that I started at St. Stephen, my wife Kate took over her mom's family business. Her mom opened this store, it's called Babyland, uh, at the same time that Kate was born. And Kate's mom decided that she wanted to retire and she asked Kate if she would like to do it. Babyland is located in a certain section of Canton. The store, the building that the store is in, uh, has been there for quite a while. The area that the store is in is not necessarily the best or the most well-kept area in the whole world. It's in a section of Canton. Uh, indeed, uh, if you've ever been to Canton for any of the Hall of Fame things, uh, the Hall of Fame parade, this big festival, uh, goes right down the street right in front of Babyland. Uh, and this is Kate's business or her vocation now. Not long ago, uh, Kate uh, replaced the sign out front, the sign that I think has been there since the beginning of the business and since they moved into this building uh, to be Babyland. And she replaced it because she wanted uh, to have a different uh, image or a different connection with the community around her. Now the truth is that the way that Babyland works, 
I think, is more of a ministry than almost any uh, thing that I do day in and day out. People bring their items, they uh, tend to be pretty gently used items because they're from babies or toddlers and they just grow out of the things too quickly. And Kate pays those folks cash. So it's a sort of return on the investment that they spent on that stuff that can be kind of expensive. She buys it and then at not a whole lot of markup and still really inexpensively, she's able to sell that to the people who live in and around the community of Babyland. To me, it's a ministry. Clothes are a basic good. Feeling good about ourselves and having clothes that we're confident in is a really uh, neat thing to be able to offer. And Kate and her business of Babyland, although it uh, may be in this old building in this old section of town, has become a stalwart in the community. People have raised their children shopping at Babyland, and now their children's children's children come and shop there. And Kate has a relationship with I don't know how many families where she can offer inexpensive but smile-bringing things to people. And so Kate's sign uh, isn't the whole part of who she is, but she felt like to upgrade it would bring attention to the place and would also tell people that she thinks it's important, that it look clean and neat, and that when they're in there buying things, that they would know that they're part of a community that they would take pride in or feel good about. Kate has run uh, her business now for about five years, and I will tell you that the last uh, three, four months or so have, I'm sure, been like for you, the most unprecedented and really the most difficult thing that she's ever been through. So much of the business has had to change. And so much of the people of the place have had to change some of their habits and the way that they use the store. And what she's experienced already is that Babyland is a part of the community. It's integrated. And that yes, she wanted a new sign because she wanted it to look good, but people know that it's about more than the sign. The sign is part but they feel welcomed there. There is a sign uh, that our church, St. Stephen, at one point had out. It was before my time here. Uh, it's this sign that said, Visitors Expected. I don't know the whole story about this. I don't know who put it up. Uh, I don't know uh, when it came down. I just know that it's been being stored in this garage uh, where all the Boy Scout stuff is kept outside of the church and that it's in pretty much disrepair. And so I'd like you to think about it, especially with the background of this uh, tail end of this uh, gospel from the 10th chapter of Matthew. We've been in this gospel uh, for uh, a few weeks now, and it really is a hard thing to hear. It's called Jesus' Discourse to His Disciples, and it has a lot to do with, I think, addressing how difficult it's going to be to live out uh, the calling or the, the life of the Spirit in the world around us. If they've been made new, the disciples, and you and I, if we've been made new in our baptism, we're set maybe in a place in the world that makes us a sign that's maybe a little bit at odds or different than the world around us. God's Holy Spirit fills us. We're made a new creature in our baptism, and that means that we're moved from the old thing. And Jesus in the 10th chapter of Matthew has been talking about how this new thing that we're made into is uh, hard to sort of, sort of know how to fit into the old thing. But this is the tail end of it, and it's just a couple of verses. And at the tail end of it, Jesus says some things that really simplify and clarify the whole thing. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever you welcome, I'll be in the midst of that. And all it comes down to is a cold cup of water, or some baby clothes at a good price or a community that people are offered in to, to enter into, and that in entering into, they know that they're loved and provided for and taken care of in whatever way that we can. They're accepted as who they are. They're not uh, looked at and like so many uh, social media posts, yelled at or demanded or protested at or told what they have to believe, but they're brought into this place where instead of demanding and telling, we dialogue and talk we ask how we can pray for them. We ask why people might feel the way they feel about uh, equality among races, or we ask why people might feel the way they feel or, or, or uh, about uh, history changing or any of these sorts of things. 
and we don't look at them and we dem and demand, but we enter and we begin with asking a question. And the question I'll ask you is what kind of sign we put out. If it's a sign uh, that's demanding and lecturing, is that the same sign that God puts out for us? You see, in my experience for the last few months, I've learned what it is to be welcomed into God's arms because I'm so dependent on God and God doesn't look at me and lecture me and criticize me. I find relief and that welcome is a welcome that to fully experience, I'd like to be able to expend, extend to other people. It's a sign that we put out. Sort of like this sign that says visitors expect it. Except like that modern image sign that I was talking about, our visitors expected sign has seen better days, right? So maybe if instead of uh, having this sign out and having it look right and having it uh, be thought provoking, uh, we think of this another way. Whoever we welcome in uh, and in the presence of that, we welcome in Christ. Is it welcoming to leave with a demand or a lecture? No. So we know that we're made into a people that are in alignment with the sign that God makes us. And this alignment is an alignment that asks questions. How can I care for you? How can I pray for you? Can you explain to me what it is that you're experiencing or fearful of? And it's a dialogue and like the people in the community of Babyland, it's a relationship that goes beyond the location and the signs, and it goes into a depth and a place where God is fully present. This sign, our sign that says visitors expected, the message is completely right, by the way, is worn out and needs replaced. What if it was to be replaced by you and I, with our lives, you and I who are welcomed into God's presence, when we cry out and need God for ourselves, and you and I who are asked, because we've been welcomed without demands or lectures, to be welcoming to others, even if their skin is different, even if they have jobs that we've vilified or they have opinions that we don't know how to feel about, we know that visitors are expected and that we welcome them because in more than the external thing that a sign is, but it points to something else. It's in the depth of the relationship that we can get to when we ask questions and interact that God is present. Visitors expect it. The sign is worn out. But you are made new. Amen. <laughs>
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of companionship, encourage our relationships with our siblings in Christ. Bless our conversations, shape our shared future, and give us hearts eager to join in a festal shout of praise. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of abundance, you make your creation thrive and grow to provide all that we need. Inspire us to care for our environment and be attuned to where the earth is crying out. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, your grace is poured out for all. Inspire authorities, judges, and politicians to act with compassion. Teach us to overcome fear with hope meet hate with love, and welcome one another as we would welcome you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of care, a company of all who are deepest need, comfort those who are sick, lonely, or abandoned. Strengthen those who are in prison or awaiting trial. Renew the spirits of all who call upon you. Today, we especially pray for Steve Finley, Bob Hoff, Jackie and Ted Jarmal, Paul Mosier, Liz Stafford, Jack and Betty Pam, Sam and Martha Osgood, the people who work for the city of Stowe, residents of our nursing homes and their families, and all those we hold in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of community, we give thanks for this congregation. Give us passion to embrace your mission and the vision to recognize where you are leading us. Teach us how to live more faithfully with each other. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of love, you gather in your embrace all who have died. Keep us steadfast in our faith and renew our trust in your promise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, just as Christ gives us his peace, may you know that the peace of God is with you and be filled with that peace and confident enough to share it with your neighbors, with those you would have been gathered with, with all those you may see, even if you still have to be six feet apart. May the peace of Christ be with you always. And I would ask you once again to remember all of those that you would have been welcomed into St. Stephen by today, to remember who you would have seen, and to remember that you can still give them a phone call or send them an email or send them something in the mail. Peace be with you. Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts, that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our strength, and our song. Amen. Gathered together this morning, we are bold to pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. People of God who have been welcomed into your lives by a loving God who cares for you, remember that filled with the Holy Spirit, you are now able to or called to serve God with gladness. Remember to be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Thanks be to God. Stay safe. Enjoy today and the rest of the week, and we'll see you soon.